I wondered if maybe all too often we are just a bunch of jackdaws sitting in a tree. Science has discovered the secret of real democracy. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. If you're so inclined, incline your finger over to the button that makes people want to watch this episode because they respect you and hold you in high esteem. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, this is a, an interesting story that came from science by way of Agence France Press uh, a, a, on the France 24 news network, which is France 24. It's like their CNN. Uh, scientists have been studying a bird uh, that is predominant in Europe and uh, North Africa called the jackdaw. Daw, uh, because of the sound it makes. And I'm not sure if it makes the sound da, 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 or jack, 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 but it makes a sound that makes it named the jackdaw. In any case, they've been monitoring these groups of jackdaws. And by the way, a group of jackdaws is a clattering of jackdaws. Uh, the clatterings of jackdaws can number anywhere from 160 up to some 1,500 birds. And what they noticed is that as they're all clustered around in treetops and sitting on wires, kind of clustered together, uh, sometimes one or two jackdaws will fly away and a small group of, of jackdaws will go with them. But most of them don't leave until their chatter reaches a crescendo. They get louder and louder and louder. And then finally, all of a sudden, all of the jackdaws just up and fly away. And so this fascinated them. So they started recording these episodes and they were noticing this correlation between mass exodus and the crescendo of chatter. And then they recorded some of these episodes and played them back in the presence of a clattering of jackdaws. And they found that they could induce the clattering of jackdaws to depart early some six and a half minutes earlier than would be expected otherwise, if they simply played that crescendo to them because they would think that that was what was going on. And what they concluded, uh, Bill Whittle, was that jackdaws are voting. So the jackdaws mm. collectively are casting votes. And until they get a, like a majority or a super majority of votes that says, run away, run away, they remain in their place for the most part. But once they reach that critical mass and they're all chattering at the same time, they decide they can all uh, depart at the same time. And scientists, Bill, have concluded that the, that the birdocracy is at work here, that there is a democratic form of governance that helps them decide. Um, and I don't know why when I read this, I immediately thought, I need to share this with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green because I think they'll see more in the, and they will follow the science to its mm. natural conclusion. So Bill, please follow away. So the argument is, is that these birds uh, are, are basically participating in democracy. Uh, which means that they're making a decision to do something, but they're not because they're birds. Um, they're birds. And and they don't get together. And, you know, the, the increasing of the clattering is is just a series of, of environmental stimuli that's represent, that, that each bird receives and responds to it. And then when the entire, when there reaches a critical mass of this stuff, everybody's wired to depart. These are all instinctive. It's not like the jackdaws are sitting up there on the wires going, hey, Jim, I'm thinking about going. What do you say? No, nah, I don't really feel like it just yet. Well, well, well the Tim, and, Tim and Mary have already moved. Look, they're, they're practically packing up. Yeah, but those people, you know, I just don't think. They're, they're always, look, Tim and Mary are always the ones to leave early. They're always, they're, they're just better than, no, no, I'm not doing it. In fact, matter of fact, I'm not going at all. I'm going to stay here. If, Tim and Mary, if they're leaving early, I'm going to stay here. It, these, this is not how it works. This is just simple biology. This is simple, simple, simple stuff. These these are instinctive uh, responses to to cues that that at, on some level are probably pro, probably selected for for more, more jackdaws. The gazelles, you know, when when a lion comes out of the grass, they don't have a discussion and and they, and they don't have parties and they don't canvass each other about what the best course of action would be. You know, well, I think we ought to run because the lion's charging at us. Well, let's see what these people think. It, 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 it's just not science. It's nothing like science. Calling it science, calling it a, a scientific interaction on what human democracy is, is precisely the kind of arrogance that that has given science such a tarnished name. You know, politics is not only not science; it's anti-science, and and you cannot conflate the two. 
So, so to say that these birds are are are, are participating in a in a democratic act is to is to grossly grossly simplify what what the entire idea of democracy means. Democracy means the people choose. That means you make a choice. These birds aren't choosing. They're making volitional intent, you know, with, with what they're doing. I say, sham on you, for sham, uh, you French <laughs> researchers. And, and by the way, were they talking about European jackdaws or, or African jackdaws? I don't want to get into that discussion. Um, <laughs> Stephen Green, uh, it seems like like Bill is is just uh, not willing to follow the science on this. He's one of these no. science deniers uh, that, that can't have this kind of discussion because it challenges some of his worldview. In fact, he seems to be suggesting that these jackdaws are not actually sentient beings, but are simply going wherever the crowd goes mindlessly, like they're just, once it kind of reaches a crescendo of noise, then they, in knee-jerk reaction, they go and do whatever the mob is doing. Um, I, I don't know if we should describe our fellow American, I, I don't know if we should describe these birds in these kinds of terms. Are, can you come to the defense of these jackdaws? They, they are uh, voting, aren't they? I'm of two minds here as to whether or not this is democracy. And let me kind of uh, share my thoughts with you. and Maybe we can come to some sort of very scientific conclusion. On the one hand, there is no way this is a democracy in action. I've seen democracy in action. Uh, at no point have I heard any of these jackdaws demand any kind of nest building subsidy or <laughs> any kind of nest building tax break. So there's no democracy there. Uh, I have not seen any of the, I've not heard any of these jackdaws insist that some other jackdaw has to raise their uh, little jackdaw chicks for eight hours a day. Um, uh, what else? Oh, uh, I haven't heard of any trans jackdaws insisting on their rights to lay eggs, even though they don't have the plumbing to do so. There are so many elements here that are just uh, so many democratic elements that are simply missing uh, from this whole thing that. I don't know how anybody, particularly the French, who are very into their subsidies and their taxes, could ever mistake this for a functioning democracy. On, on the other hand, there is this. These birds just start chattering and chattering and chattering and chattering and chattering and chattering and chattering away until just everybody wants to get the hell out of there. And <laughs> if you couldn't mistake that for a democratic presidential primary... Maybe it is democracy in action. Well, obviously, we're going to have to wait for further study. And I do hope that some government agency is issuing massive grants to for these scientists to follow around uh, clatterings of jackdaws uh, throughout the European continent and the uh, and sub-Saharan Africa or wherever they're hanging out. Um, but I just when I read this story, um, I couldn't help to see the connections. Um, of what we label as democracy being this idea that there will be a person who has a thought and expresses his voice and his vote is tabulated and his candidate represents him and somehow his will along with the will of his neighbors gets expressed through a democratic process in a representative form of government in these United States. And um, and I wondered if maybe all too often we are just a bunch of jackdaws sitting in a tree, jacking away, and the, once the whole clattering gets to a chattering volume of a certain level, then we're moved. It reminded me of James Madison's primary concern with democratic forms of government, and that is that the masses could be swayed by a charismatic figure and in a moment of passion decide to make uh, a move that would have long-term implications based on a short-term stimulation. And I, I hope that they do continue to study these jackdaws and uh, find a remedy for this at least. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. We cannot allow a jackdaw gap to, dis to, to develop. That's the thing we must, we must be eternally vigilant against. <laughs>